is the Fox Sports World Report. Max Bredoff dropped in to give us his views on the latest happenings in the world of soccer. Arsenal face some pretty expensive music as the FA hands down its disciplinary decision. Turkey and England are also slapped with cash payouts for their fracas at the Euros. And Matt Brown also stops by to give us his thoughts on the latest matches at the Rugby World Cup. We have just a few games to go in the round robin. Crunch time is almost upon yes, us, and is. Matt should be getting pretty excited about the upcoming <laughs> knockout stage. Matt is on the way, but first we check in with Max for this week's Maximum Soccer. Handbag, playoff, overachievement, great goals. What do all these things have in common? Well, they are all found in the wonderful world of football. Welcome to Maximum Soccer. I'm Max Spreadoff. This week, we take a look at how the coal was burning hot in West London, while another coal was just plain hot. In Holland, it was a Dutch Donnybrook, while in Italy, the Italian chess game reached checkmate. First things first, we start here in MLS, where DC United sank the crew's playoff chances. MLS reached a crescendo in the ultimate round of the regular season last weekend as DC United drew with the Kansas City Wizards to beat out the Columbus Crew for the fourth and final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. The Wizards were led by 40-year-old MLS scoring champion Preki, but early in the second half, Aristo Stoichkov headed in the equalizer to assure United of its first trip to the postseason in four years. While DC fans were elated, the match was anything but spectacular, with the Wizards already assured of a playoff spot, Neither team really had any incentive to forge ahead for the game winner. And following a ridiculous overtime period that looked more like a senior citizen kickabout, it is clear that MLS should do away with overtime. Put everyone out of their misery, just end matches after 90 minutes like the rest of the world does. Arsenal, Chelsea and Man United have company at the top of the Premiership, and it's not Liverpool nor Newcastle. Fulham and Birmingham are the two unlikely sides keeping some elite company in the top five. After being tipped by many pundits for relegation, the Cottagers are riding high after their shocking 3-1 defeat of Manchester United at Old Trafford. The victory marked Fulham's first win over the Red Devils in 39 years and has manager Chris Coleman being hailed as a genius. At 33 years of age, Coleman is the youngest gaffer in England with the Londoners equal top scores in the Premiership and six points off the pace. Fabulous Fulham is the most improved team in England. The Blues, meanwhile, are anything but after last weekend's 1-0 victory over Bolton. Bolton, Birmingham to fourth place, extending their unbeaten run to three. With goalkeeper Meg Taylor brought in on loan from Fulham, former Manchester United defender Steve Bruce has molded his team in his own playing image. The proof is in the pudding. So 10 games, Brucey's Blues boast the league's best defense, conceding just five goals in the league. Not too shabby for a team that was playing first division football just 17 months ago. So Chris Coleman and Steve Bruce look like the early front-runner candidates for manager of the year. Now, Fulham's Cole is hot indeed. The same can be said for Blackburn's Andy Cole, who blew his stack last weekend. Referee Steve Bennett sent off the former Newcastle and Man United striker for violent conduct after he tried to punch Southampton's Michael Svensson. The incident spurred a melee involving several players from both teams and also drew the ire of Rovers manager Graham Souness. After the Saints' victory, the fiery Scott had to be separated from Southampton assistant coach Dennis Roth. Apparently, Sunis was incensed by Roth's efforts to sway the referee into giving Cole a red card. The series of events reflects the way things have gone for Rovers lately. The loss was their fourth defeat on the trot. Dropped the Lancashire outfit down to 16th place. Violent play was not limited just to England. The handbags were going off in Holland as well. Defending champions PSV hosted Ajax in what turned out to be a match of bad blood, literally. After PSV defender Andre Uyer and Kevin Hoffland were knocked out of the game by some nasty challenges by Zlatan Ibrahimovic, the match boiled over when Ajax captain Rafael van der Vaart was sent off just before halftime for kicking Jan de Jong. Although the Amsterdammers are down to 10 men, the visitors valiantly fought back and twice equalized thanks to some horrific defending by the Dutch champions. It was a good result for Ajax, which remains at the top of the table. But PSV's title defense was dented as the Eindhoven side flipped to third place. A couple of quick takes now. How about the form of Monaco? Despite financial crisis, the French side is at the top of the league standing following a 1-1 draw with Frachot. 
Didier Deschamps men are also looking good in the Champions League and remain second in their group, one point behind Deportivo. In the race for FIFA Player of the Year, my early pick is Juventus midfielder Pavel Nedved. The Czech cannon is having a wonderful season and scored one of the best goals in the last 10 years during last weekend's win over Brescia. Indeed, there are few better than Nedved in the world today. Well, Nedved's Juventus lie at the top of the ladder in the Serie A. Last week, I talked about a side right now in mid-table, and that is causing all sorts of stir. Inter, what is the problem last week? Well, they fired Hector Cooper. I got a bunch of dreary emails from you out there. It's clearly Inter of Milan fans. This one from Dipio in Lauder Hill, Florida. Dipio writes, yes, the player personnel we have really needs some help. I say keep Fieri, keep Toldo, get rid of the rest. I knew we were cursed when I saw Massimo Moratti do the sign of the cross in the stands when they were in front of Lazio two seasons ago, only to see the Scudetto escape their hands. This is important because Inter's Champions League play is not so bad. How important the Scudetto is in Italy, it's very exciting, as opposed to some other leagues that may put European conquest ahead of them. Thank you, Dipio. This week, I'm going to shift focus back to Major League Soccer. Of course, the playoffs have begun. Well, they will this weekend, down to eight teams. I pick Chicago out of the East. Colorado out of the West, changed a few times. My friend Alan Hopkins can attest to that. I remember, I told him a few weeks ago, who do you think is going to come out and make MLS Cup 2003? Drop us a line at Maximum Soccer at FoxSportsWorld.com. So many options. I'd love to hear from you. I am all finished. Back to you guys in the studio. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Max. Time now to remind you about our Topic of the Week question. To find it, all you have to do is head to our Fox Sports World website at foxsportsworld.com. You can find the topic icon down the right-hand side. Clicking on it reveals the question, what team will win the MLS Cup? Let us know what you think. We're going to pick the best three responses, showcase them on Friday's show. Remember to include all your personal info, because if we do showcase your response, we got some great Fox Sports World swag headed your way. And here's a web line for you. The 2005 World Club Championship should be played in North America, Central America, or the Caribbean. That's according to a committee of soccer's governing body. The U.S. is considered the leading contender to host the tournament. FIFA set the field at 16 teams and said it will be played from July 17th to 31st of 2005. When the report returns, the FA dishes out the punishment for Arsenal after the incidents at Old Trafford. Stay with us.